Radio. So here we are with uh, Meryl and Dilly. So first time, it's the first podcast that we've ever done. I'm pretty excited about it. And we've been wanting to do this for ages, but never have. And we thought what a special occasion to have uh, the Dilmars in town or Fernando's as you called. And there's a great story behind your history that I really would like to get to the bottom of. And Dilly, you, well, you and I have something in common. We both have uh, very successful fathers which makes life a little bit interesting around the traps, but we are gonna talk probably about your father and how he got started. And Meryl, I'm gonna start with you by asking, you know, the tea game's a relatively large industry and I would like to go back, way back beyond, and when did you actually get into the tea game? First of all, JP, um, it's great and I'm happy to be on talking to you on business, the way I started, where we are, and you have, we have similar businesses, yours is a family business, your father started it, you're following it, mine is a family business, and my son, second generation, is continuing and innovating and building on what I have created, and I started my life in tea, very long ago, 70 years ago, I devoted my life to tea 70 years ago because when I saw the exploitation of our tea plantation workers and farmers by the British colonists at the time, they took our tea to England for maybe as a number 50 cents a kilo of tea. They mixed it with tea from various cheap sources and called it Ceylon tea and sold it for 20, 25 times what they paid the farm. So I said, my goodness. My farmers, my plantation workers are creating multimillionaires and billionaires outside our country while they remain poor and in want. So I said, this can't be right. I was only 24 years of age and the foolish youth in me said, I'm one day, gay, one day going to have my own brand of tea and it will bring integrity back to tea. And the consumers will be able to taste and enjoy the finest tea on earth in single origin, 100% pure Ceylon tea. And what's more, I said, I will share my earnings with the poor, the needy and the underprivileged. That I carried out by putting on every single package of Dilma tea, single origin, 100% pure Ceylon tea. That's the quality and the integrity of the tea. Grown and packaged in Ceylon, branded in Ceylon and brought to you with love and care by my family. <laughs> so, <clears throat> grown and packaged in Sri Lanka under our brand name ensures that all the profits that went out of our country to England initially and to many other countries thereafter now remain with Dilma, now remain in Sri Lanka. And I don't put all of it into my pocket. About half of it goes to make this a better world for the poor people. Yeah. And I have now I started with 18 employees, so I thought when I started enjoying the fruits of my hard work in profits beyond what I was used to. I came from a humble family. My parents taught me the proper values. And then when I exceeded, that's the sort of money I was used to. I came to the crossroads where all entrepreneurs will face someday. If they fail, you don't make that journey. If they succeed, you come and to a point where you decide, I'm getting so much money, what shall I do? Shall I be a big rich man flaunting my wealth or shall I help the community? I had no difficulty in making the decision because I was only used to humble beginnings and humble way of life. So I said, no, I'm going to share it with the poor and I will start with my employees. So I called my employees. I had only 18 of them at the time. And I said, I'm going to give you very special benefits from my the profits I make. I'm going to give your children all the school textbooks, clothes, everything necessary, plus a little pocket money and scholarships for the writer children. I could afford to be so lavish because I had 18 employees and I thought the maximum I would ever have is about 25 or 30. <laughs> today, I have in the Dilma factory 1,400 workers and in the plantations we have about 20,000 workers. Every one of those children get these facilities and today I'm humbled in saying and you should be proud in the consumer's achievement. Today the 
second and third generation of tea pickers children who could only pick tea are doctors lawyers professionals high court judges all because of the little money i devote i decide to allocate to the wider community and alleviating poverty in my country what i learned subsequently is that any charitable work we do and the money we spent on charity is lending to god and god repays you in abundance 10 15 times what you spend i stand testimony to that to say the kind of earnings how my earnings go consumers around the world many people say if it is not dilma it's not my cup of tea because when you buy a packet of tea in the supermarket and when you enjoy that tea you contribute some money direct to sri lanka the owner of the packet and i share it with everyone and it is it is a sad thing but i am humbly in saying that dilma is the only company in the world which is vertically integrated in the industry we have plantations several thousand acres of plantations we look after all the workers in the plantations or the farmers we have all the factories facilities required for value addition marketing printing packaging and to bring our pack of tea as i said love and care ethically produced ethically produced means all the earnings remain in our country and it benefits the producer it is far ahead of fair trade there is nothing fair about trade trade is squeezing the supply and getting the best deal from the consumer so we are the only farmers in the tea business who bring their crop to the market every other brand name is belongs to a trader and i one thing i learned from australia is consumers used to tell me and write to me mr dilma you are not a faceless multinational you have a face to it i couldn't understand it somebody <laughs> sat with me and explained you have two or three big brands global brands who is the face behind it who is the owner the owners died long ago now they are owned by insurance companies pension funds big investors who tell the ceo give us 15% more profit year after year where does that profit come from the heavy discounts they give in supermarkets if you eliminate competition eliminate people like us so all that discounts come on the back of the poor suppliers the discounts are funded by the poor suppliers who are already living in hunger so when you buy dilma you are f- supporting a farm so we want more so i was hoping that many other producing countries and our own producers will follow the example of dilma and value it but they do not have the courage or the confidence or the commitment to our crop or to the welfare of the country that is what i am doing so we when a consumer buys or rather when a consumer bought a packet of tea 32 years ago when i launched it it had certain history quoted on the single origin 100% pure celotic grown and packaged celot today it is the same stories on the packages the tea tastes as fresh and the highest quality as it could be that is exceptional in the case of dilma in this discounting world supermarkets encourage discounts and the big traders say yes we'll give you 50% discount quality goes down 60% yeah so they market a brand name i market dilma markets pure silot tea single origin unmixed freshly packaged our tea can be in the package that you buy in the supermarkets 14 to 15 days after picking fresh tea leaves in the fields all the processing is in house so i carry the responsibility for everything in that pack no other 
company. No other brand can give that guarantee because they don't know what the, the tea they packed last year, three months <laughs> ago, or day to day. Because they meet the, the demand of supermarkets, discount, discount. So oh, that's unfortunately a, a, a beast that the, the, the supermarket identities have started, I believe. Yes. Yes. And I guess lucky enough being able to see and be in one of your uh, be involved with your of seeing your picking and your plantations yes. and and seeing the the ladies and picking the leaves at, and actually seeing how happy people are yes. Yes. working with you. I mean, they don't know me from a bar of soap, but I'm I'm assuming they hadn't seen too many Westerners as well. No. So I might have been like a highlight for them for some reason, but it shows the ethics of your business and. If you go back to 23 years ago, what were you doing when you were 23 years of age just before you started the tea game? Yes. I was in school. I finished my secondary education. I hoped to become a lawyer. And I, as I was going to seek entry into law college, I was offered this opportunity to be trained in tea tasting. So I jumped at the idea because during my school holidays, I used to go and spend part of my holidays in my friend's tea gardens. And I began to love that environment, fresh smell of tea, and that like fresh tea. And the way the workers performed their responsibilities so diligently. And I was so, I knew this was about 60 years ago. And they worked, they would get up at 4.30 in the morning, feed their children, take them to school, then go to the field and work come back at one o'clock, bring the children from the school, feed them, go back and feed. And they worked so diligently. And I used to go to the fields and talk to some of them. And they were smiling and, you know, doing their job like that. Then I knew I had a vague idea about plantations, the estate work. So when I had the opportunity, they hadn't taken a single local young man for training and tea tasting. The British said they eat too much spicy food so therefore they can't taste tea. <laughs> really? <laughs> they, they said that, they said that. <laughs> Finally, the government prevailed on them, insisted they take some. So they took... Uh, uh, so was that, was that the Dutch? Uh, no, British. British? British. British. So it's the British? British. British. So, so, you, so you're telling me you were the only uh, local that was no, They took six locals yeah. and then thereafter they took a few more. And we were trained in that. And then in part of my training, learn the work in Ceylon for one, one year. Then I went to London to see the London end of marketing. Yep. So that is what I saw. And I was shocked at the, what they did to our tea. I'm here today answering your questions as selling tea because of what I saw there. It changed my life. And I, as a young man, I said, I was 24 years of age. And I said, this can't be. I said, I made the brash youthful dreams, wild dreams, saying I'm going to have my brand one day. 34 years later, <laughs> I came up with, with my brand. I had no money to get consultants on marketing and branding and uh, developing a brand name. So I thought the cheapest thing would be to brand it after my children. So I called Dilma after Dilhan and Malik. I coined from their names, they came free. Then, <laughs> 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 then when I, <laughs> when I, uh, I don't think they were free, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to get a celebrity. Yeah, I did get Kamal initially. That's but so I, everyone knows the, yes, the Kamal. Kamal yes, um, the, and what was the the, the tagline? The, the tagline, and um, that everybody was humming that. You know, at that time for two three years, yeah, no, people were humming. So he, do you he, like everybody yeah. try it? Yes, yes, yes. Do try, it? do try, do try. Do try. It. That's yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> do try it. They grow with the pairings and, and so on. So I, I were you one of the first to introduce the like the infusing of teas that you started to see, you know, with your, you had your original teas, English mm. breakfast and whatnot, and then, then it started to get, was it infusing started to flow through? And That's how long right. ago is that, like, you know, we're in 2018, 2019? That was in, well, um, we started in the mid-90s where we brought natu uh, natural uh, extracts of uh, different types of fruit and different combinations. 
And uh, right now, I mean, we are working on some really exciting uh, stuff. In fact, we have some great news later this week happening in, in Sydney at uh, the Product of the Year Awards where we, we've been working on, on products where you have uh, real cinnamon and not just the 0.1% that you need legally, but 10% of cinnamon, turmeric, stuff that we grow. Okay, uh, so that's in. coming out in a product range? Well, it's, it's in a product, but it's, it's just been recognized for its human health benefits. Uh, okay. Technically, we're not allowed to tell you more, but uh, we can after the 14th. But when uh, we have a whole range uh, don't publish of, it before of the 14th. <laughs> they said the vodka selection, which I produced in 2002 or three, where we have matched tea to a Cabernet Sauvignon, Shiraz, Pinot Noir, and a Chardonnay. Well, the, it's like wine. Wine and tea have huge synergies because they are processed, grown. According to the elevation, you get low-grown tea, just like Cabernet Sauvignon, in appearance and the mouth feel. Just that. And the Chardonnay, no really at 7,000 feet, is this color. So it's like a Chardonnay. Okay. So we captured the terroir of each region in those teas. But it is too soon when people think tea is a cheap drink. What are they talking about? Why? It is now, after that date, it is now being appreciated in five-star hotels. I think this is true. If you have those four teas, you have the whole selection of world teas in there. But being, as I said, the significant difference between all other brands and this, we are in the tea country. We are up to our next in tea. So we get all these ideas and we do this. <laughs> I have uh, many, so you talk about tea yes. and you talk about how you make it. Do you have a special technique to, yeah. how, like back home, I'm yes. assuming it's a bit harder when you travel, but back home, do you, is there a special, what is a way that you would have your tea in the morning? It, brewing. You know, yeah, like is there a special technique here? Is it in a stocking? I remember I've had it in a stocking or something like that. You know, all of those, they're, they're just, um, yeah, you can use different types of accessories and the stocking's fine, as long as it's natural cotton. <laughs> but <laughs> as long, long as you haven't worn it before. But, but you know, the, the principle of tea, it's quite simple. You need good tea. It needs to be fresh, pure in origin, because uh, a tea is formed by the influence of uh, sunlight, of the winds, of the soil. So it's really a combination of heaven and earth and finally the, the human involvement. So you need a fresh tea that's been protected. Uh, so, okay, so you need to have filtered water, which shouldn't have too many minerals in it. Boil it once, or if you're using an urn or something like this, you need to make sure it's got a good thermostat in it. You then need to make sure that you brew the tea right. Brewing tea right actually is where most people go wrong. Typically in England, I think there was University of London study, typically people brew their tea for less than 20 seconds. So between 17 and 20 seconds, that's almost 80% of people. When you do that, you don't get the flavor and you don't get the natural goodness. You don't get the antioxidants in tea. So you've got to make sure if it's a tea bag, you put the right, so one tea bag, 200 mils roughly of, of uh, this freshly, brew, uh, freshly boiled uh, filtered water. Uh, and you've got to stir because otherwise what happens is the tea just brews around the tea bag and you end up with something very weak. If it's loose leaf tea, make sure it's 2.5 grams per uh, 200 mils. Put it in there, stir, and then leave it for three minutes. You've got to stir every minute, just to, you know, otherwise the tea sinks to the bottom and you don't get proper brewing. Stir it a few times, stir again, uh, either put it through an infuser if it's, uh, or um, yeah, an infuser uh, if it's um, loose leaf tea, or if it's a tea bag, you just take the tea bag out and enjoy. And the important thing that we're encouraging people to do now is to always have their tea with something that they might enjoy. So, you know, when you pair a tea, with, um, say, for example, take uh, a, a typical uh, black tea. And when you're having it, uh, um, say, with a, a dessert. Well, um, okay, okay, <laughs> you can do that, you can do that. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, that, in that sense too, but also with food. Yeah. Because so if you're having... Biscuit, oh, oh. My father was talking about uh, the high-grown teas. Yeah. Okay? The beauty of that mm -hmm. is that from the same plant in high, medium, different elevations, because of the temperature and soils and so on, you get from the same plant and the same method, totally different teas. And so when you consider that that tea is made by nature and then you use that 
light golden uh, character of a, uh, of a high grown tea or the intensity of a low elevation tea. The low elevation tea, for example, fantastic with steak, bit of caramelization on the top, incredible. And you get, you get a pairing between tea and food on two levels, unlike in the case of wine. So you get, of course, the flavor pairing. So you're taking chocolate or a bitterness in the chocolate is brought out by the low elevation tea, or you're taking uh, uh, um, something grilled where the caramelization yeah. is brought out. And at the second level, what happens is that once you've eaten it, if there's a, a deposit of, of fat or sugar, the tea, the antioxidants in the tea, they completely reset the palate by emulsifying the fats and helping the body to synthesize the sugars. And that's what tea does in your body because tea com- uh, protects the body from diabetes, from uh, um, car- heart disease. It help protects from... from uh, Uh, dementia and I mean there are hundreds of different things but you can practically feel it when you taste tea so if you have a salad and you drizzle it with a little olive oil pair it with uh, my father's ranwata and it is off the charts really yeah, right. the tea tea break and the cup of tea is a ritual you relax with a cup of tea they never say relax with a cup of coffee and what you do but Unfortunately, the tea bag destroyed all that. <laughs> so the tea bag obviously it become more convenient, convenient at a cost, yeah. and he would sacrifice to go to court me. <laughs> <laughs> so do, I've got to ask a question: Do you drink coffee? You don't know, relax with a cup of coffee. Yeah, but do you drink coffee as well? No, no. When I He's travel, trying to avoid the question. Ah, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm every time I'm interviewed. <laughs> Everyone the media, you. they ask me. Yes, I said yes, and I go when I can't get good tea. I have a cappuccino, and uh, okay. and I enjoy what I drink. But that's all. I don't make drinking coffee a habit. When I was uh, in Sri Lanka, mm-hmm. and Sri Lanka was pretty passionate about tea. Yes. Do you think what other country out there do you think is extremely passionate about tea? I I'll throw out mine. I think Chi- the Chinese yes. are very passionate about their tea. The Japanese, yes. Chinese, Japanese, Japanese. Koreans. Yeah, yeah. So with your market and your product, how much of your product comes to Australia from so like literally from Col- Colombo or Sri Lanka? About how much of of the product? 20%, about 20% of okay. our, and the rest of it to a total of 100 countries, but we are uh, a specialty brand in for example in Europe or Canada or South America. Russia is so Largest significant, yes. Yeah, yes. so it's truly global. I mean, it's it's, 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 it's amazing. Do you, do you look back at me all sometimes I, and think, no, oh, no. I can't, I, I just couldn't have imagined it would it would be rolling out like this. And then no, I always, I always say it after the interview, when I look back, I just can't say, oh, we did it. Yeah. I can't believe it. Nobody really believed it. And I said, divine inspiration. God guided me all along. And today, I, whenever I speak, I say, I thank this Christ for guiding me right up to this point because without his guidance, no human being could have achieved what I achieved now yeah. in my lifetime. It's one of the four leading global brands. Where did I come from? Uh, a 24-year-old, yeah. a 24-year-old in, in, in Sri Lanka. It's, yeah. it's, it's hard to believe. And yes. I asked Dad the same sort of questions. It's like, did you ever think that you'd be, you know, we're at the new distribution center here? Yeah, did yeah. you ever think this? And yeah, he, he just sits there and he can't... Same story, yes. Totally same story. Can't yeah. imagine it at all. No, and, and that's... Just from making similar sure... Similar stories, yes. Yeah, surrounding yourself with the right people. <clears throat> You've had a bit of an exciting time you know, when you came to Australia. Uh, back then, there's another brand, Bushes. Bushes. Or, Bushes. Or, if you know. Okay, I don't, I don't watch what I'll say, but you know that was like a, a budget. Bushes owned by. Yeah, yeah. The big company. Big companies. Uh, now, where is Bushes now? They are. So we. Nobody to go. Oh, you can open the door. We're not like. Time for magic. Uh, <laughs> no, we're not going yet. Uh, I think, is Roger, Roger wants to, oh. No, hey, it's up to you guys. We actually got questions. But, no. what, is he wants to talk? No, 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 no. Yeah, why don't you put your dad on? Put your dad on. Yeah, 
yeah, set the door. <laughs> we are finishing. Set the we are finishing, yeah. though. I've got six o'clock. It's 4.30. What do you need that, a nap or something? To... That question you asked me, if you know okay, the humiliation, the insults, the bullying I went through the big brands when I saw it here, most human beings would have said to hell with it. I won't go. Yeah. There were many times I used to come to my hotel room and cry. Why are these people? I'm only a small thing. And why are these people trying to destroy? And time after time, once, you know, quite interesting. They formed a new, new association called Australian Tea Alliance, the big boys, and call our distributor in the meetings. Then they then said, tell Mr. Fernando to come to the next meeting. So the distributor came and told me, it's a good thing they want to get together and support you. I said, I don't believe that. Tell them to write to me, inviting me. So they wrote to me, they invited me. Then I wrote back and said, please tell me the objective in forming this Australian Tea Alliance at this point, what is it for? Then they said, we want to grow the tea category, not a particular brand. Yeah. And we want to make the same claims because the claims I made were garden fresh, unmixed, 100% pure Ceylon tea, grown and packaged in Sri Lanka and ethically produced. So they said, don't make those claims. We must make, we must make claims that we all can share. I said in my reply, I said, you and I are in conflict. You are traders, you sell tea. I sell pure Ceylon tea, grown and packaged, and I do with my profits. Then two people, the head of the of Ansfa and the chairman of Tetley, I think Anderson Law, I think his one, came to see me and threatened me. You know, you must not make those claims. You just get together with us. And I said, no, my mind is a different product. I can't do that. Then they said, you watch out what will happen to you. And you know what they did? They talked to the, they stopped one of my consignments in Perth and said, you can't use that tea. And uh, a selection of, of uh, chamomile tea. And I said, so the Greeks use this for stomach ailments and comforts. Same words were used by Twinings in one or two different words, same thing. So I wrote to the Melbourne person, uh, the, the Food Authority, but I said this. He said, perfect, I would allow this. So I went there. But then they stopped the shipment and got the product deleted. I lost $35,000 at that stage, which was big money for me. And they started bullying me. Then they said, we will get all your products deleted unless you agree to make this claim. I said, no. Then I saw the lawyers. They said, we'll get you a huge compensation. I said, I can't come to a foreign country and sue the big people here. Then they wrote to the tea buyers and say he's making wrong claims. So, so, so buyers were very sympathetic. You say, so for three, four people send the letters. I wrote to them. They say that I'm making false claims. Don't believe we all buy tea from the same source. And Australia imported 52, 52 million pounds of tea every year, one week, one million kilos a week. I was trained at the supply, Heath and Company supplied this tea. At the time I came in, they were buying three, six million pounds of tea at that stage. No, not six million, 52 million kilos, but 52 million pounds. They're buying three million pounds. They had all gone off. So they are no longer buying from the same source. They are buying big six. Then they threatened me. And when I said, I sent a strong letter, I will sue you and claim compensation. Then they wrote to the buyers and said, nullify that letter. So it was what we meant and so forth. And you know, they, they said, they went to Bob Hawk. I got news before that, told them, these people are dumping here, unhygienic to Bob Hook. So I got wind of it. I told a friend of mine to tell Bob Hook these are the facts. So Bob Hook told them. Then they said several thousand will lose their jobs if you allow them to dump this tea. So he said, 
not several thousand. We have, I know we have about 500 people in the tea industry, told them then. And if the consumer is going to benefit from this, I will encourage it. That was the answer they got. Didn't work. So, so Bob helped. He helped. Bob yeah. helped. Yes, yes, he helped. Okay. If, it, if it is going to buy, help the benefit the consumer, I will encourage it. That's all. That's a very logical thing. So everything they tried. Ultimately, I got feedback saying that the colonial culture of trade is to get all the colonies to produce raw material and for them to market. Marketing, branding is their job, not our job. Yeah. So when we start doing that, if all the, the three, four producing countries do what I did, Lipton Twinings will go to business. So that is why they said that I attack the root of the colonial trading culture. So the art of province, really, yeah. and, that's, and you're stuck to it, which yeah. is absolutely yeah. amazing. Yes. And no. No. I, I guess, you know, you look like a young man. Um, <laughs> I, I dare say you're still flat out into the business, but Dilly, you're the one that's actually yeah. running the show. Yes. Uh, would that be the fair to case or do you have to wheel, wheel dad out around the place or what's your interpretation of where He comes at? along, checks, make sure that we are staying honest. So that's, <laughs> uh, and that's a good thing. You can't replace experience uh, too easily. But uh, yeah. You've got a whole set of guidelines in place or? Yes, we have a family charter which uh, guides everything and it starts with do the right thing and it continues uh, with uh, contribute uh, a minimum 15% of all our pre-tax Change. Earnings, which uh, goes to the foundation and so on, which uh, we wouldn't want to change ever. So it's been fantastic. And you've mentioned before you had a couple of lawyers come out of uh, your, your program of just lawyers, start, doctors, and judge, judges, even, and which is amazing. And yeah. it's really, it's an amazing thing to experience yeah. once yeah. you're, you're there. Do you got to ask, do you, do you add milk or not? No, <laughs> <laughs> you can if you want, but please don't. <laughs> So straight, no milk uh, as is? Yes. Do you add sugar or honey? No sugar, no sugar. You can add honey, but if you want something different, put in a bit of cinnamon, mm. use mint leaves, mm. uh, gin with the right tea, yeah. uh, make a nice tea coffee. Cinnamon yeah, powder. Yeah. Cinnamon powder. And, yeah. it, and look, I've been told to hurry it up a bit, so we, we, will, we, won't, we don't worry about them, but you've, you look about where tea originated, and to go back to up in Colombo, Sri Lanka, um, what other countries are strong tea producers? India, Kenya, Indonesia, China, of course. China, of course. China. But you see, when I today, I walk through several of the supermarkets, tea being a great drink, it's a health drink, what they have done to tea. Tea, the only way to make it is black tea or green tea, pour boiling water, get the extract of it and enjoy the antioxidants. Now there is tea to be made in ice water and against all the principles of the Chinese. The, the emperor, Nung, no? Shang-Nung. Shang-Nung must be turning in his grave for what people are doing to this this wonderful natural herb in the world. So, uh, so, got so many versions, I go there and say, my God, what are they doing? The only good thing in tea, drink green tea, black tea, or oolong tea. Oh, they are the only genuine teas. And uh, today the people are getting distracted and deceived to try new things. I don't think they do them any good. But... Consumer demand, consumer fancies, rule the world. Or, or is it just a marketing ploy? No, it's also the absence of innovation in black tea. Okay. So whilst we spend most of our time trying to find new ways of helping consumers experience black tea, not a lot do that. So, you know, they, they move towards uh, adding flavors or adding um, or, or move towards uh, uh, infusions. But with tea, the innovation that you need is you've got to go to the plantation. And we, as tea growers, we can do that, but it's not very easy for the traders to do that. So, and it's easily seen, and you can see the trends of um, 
making your water taste better. I can understand it from a marketing aspect. I, I believe one of the strong parts about the teas is the warm when you you know they say if you've, if you're having a, a hot tea after your meal or during the meal, the Chinese are very big on it. Yeah. Uh, it helps with digestion, oh, yeah, antioxidant, all the things that you said today. And I think there's no doubt all of us agree with that. And your philosophy of what you started 23 years ago and how lucky are you to have two sons that you can just steal a name to create a brand that's, you know, one of the biggest global brands in the world. And, and it's, it's amazing. It's from humble beginnings. Yeah. You guys are exactly the same as when I met you, however many years ago, 20 years, it was probably 20 years ago, 10 yes. or 20 years ago. And you're exactly the same. And, and Dilly, I, I, you, you seeing it as well. And I met, you know, your son came on your last trip and I believe he's studying now. So you've sent him back to learn some more. But it's really amazing to see in our family businesses as ours, albeit we're yeah. just a first generation, you're going into third generation. It's so, spectacular. You know, I'm humbled in saying you visit the airline and New Zealand, all the way to KLM, all those K, uh, Qantas, uh, Belizean Airways, and all the Middle Eastern airlines, including Emirates, the big airline, they give top priority and prominence to Dilmati, where you go. All the top airlines use Dilmati. Several top hotels in the Asia Pacific region break Dilmati. So they treat their guests to the best possible tea in the world. So there's a simple, if, if it doesn't um, supply Dilma, don't fly it. Is it, is it <laughs> well, yeah. You said it, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> it's an easy way, but yeah. does the airline get worried when you order a tea on the plane? Well, some of them do, but because it's not easy. It's yeah. it's not easy for them, yeah, with the water and stuff. But yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna. Have you guys got any lasting words that you want to say? Any things that you want to say? We're gonna wrap it up. It's been it's been fantastic having you guys on a first ever Thank podcast. You. I'm super excited. One thing I like to say is that sooner or later, most affluent consumers and consumers who love their health and goodness, wellness in life, will start enjoying Dilmati. That's for sure. So that was a subliminal message for everyone to enjoy Dilma. I'm a Dilma fan. I'll be happy to say it. And I do thank you both for having a chat to us today. It's been fantastic. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you very you. much.